Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. Now, today we're going to have a look at a puzzle that's been sent in by uh, one of our followers, Gabby Dedilescu, who, who says he took 40 minutes with this and um, he called it a little beast or a little beauty or something. And uh, it he recommends, as some people do, that we do it without pencil marks because it makes it more challenging. Well, we know it makes it more challenging, but... Personally, I don't want to take 40 minutes over these puzzles if there's a way to legitimately avoid it. And I think pencil marks is a very good way to avoid it. So absolutely no promises on that score. Um, and if you enjoy doing this without pencil marks, we'll have a go at this puzzle without uh, note it down and give it a try and see how you do. Um, if Gabby's experience is anything to go by, it'll be a struggle. And it may be a struggle with them. So we'll see how we go. So, over here in this box, which has already got five givens in it and is therefore a good place to start, um, twos here and here must be in the bottom row. And in fact, fours, that one blocks that cell and this one blocks that cell. So, two and four is a pair in the bottom row. And that means three and five go in the other cells. We've got a five down here. So this one's the three. Here's a five. Um, the three in the central row must be here. And we get four, six, and seven to place in the middle. They must be in this order because of the six, seven up here and the seven down there. So that's fairly straightforward. Eight in the central box. We've got an eight in row four and an eight in column four. So eight is there. The nine down here puts a nine there. And we've got one and five to fill in. So that's fairly straightforward. Five and six. This puzzle is obviously going to get difficult later because it's not too bad to start with. So we've got the whole of the central rows filled in apart from a two, four pair over here. Now, obviously, this column with seven givens now, we've got a three and an eight to fill in, but I don't know which way round. Um, this column four, the only place for a six is now down here. And seven, five, eight, six, nine, that puts a three at the top, and we've got a two, four pair up here. Now, I'm going to pencil mark the two pairs of two and four that we've established. Uh, sorry, Gabby. That's the way it goes. Right, so... Six, nine, seven, four. Four. Look at that, four. That's ruling out three of the boxes, and that one deals with another of them, so four down there must be in that box. Um, and this three that we got up here has resolved the eight and three in column eight. So eight and three... There we go, that's quite handy. Um, two, three, one, three, one. Got a two, I think we are going to go to pencil marks a bit now. So we've got a two there or there. Six must be in the bottom row. Eight and nine are ruled out of the final column, so they have to be in those boxes, which forms an interesting little chain. Um, one, there or there. Two, three. Ah, that one's useful as well. Look, that one and eight, four, nine, six, seven in the column and two, three in the row, then the only number possible at the top here is a five now, and that's quite an interesting bit of placing that I wasn't expecting. That gives us a five down here. And the puzzle is getting a bit harder now. This must be either six or seven up here. Um, three must be in one of these two. So I'd say this is the point just about at which Gabby's got to before finding it difficult. Six there or there, five there or there. 
and R7 here or here, and here or here. Now, why 7's there? Because this 7 rules out this cell from being a 7. So the 7 in column 3 has to be in the top box. And now, we said that this cell up here has to be either 6 or 7. That's going to mean that up here, in the first box, only one of those 6 or 7's applies. So either we have 6 up there and 7 down there, or 7 up there and that pushes 6 there and 5 there. Now, that's in the sort of odd counterbalance. One, one of those must go down and the other must go up. So we have to have either 6 or 7 at the top, but only one of them, because there's a 6 or 7 in this box over here from which everything else is ruled out. Now let's try and imagine, let's try and imagine the 7 in this box up here, because that pushes the 6 down, as we said, because of that kind of counterbalance. So we've got a 6 there, and a, that makes 5 there. This cell in the corner has to be a 1 now, because that 7 has established a 6 over here. So there's a 1 there and a 9 in the middle here. Because of this 9, that, that's ruled out everything else. So now we have 1, 6, 5 in the top box, first column. And that 6 that we're placing up here, that makes this chain operate down here. The 6 here can't can't be in the bot in the corner. So that makes this 6, this 8, this 9. And that 9, 1, 4, 6, 8, 5, 9 in the row, 7 in the column. This box is either 2 or 3. And because these are 1, 6, 5, there's a 3 in column 2 up here, this one would have to be a 2. I'm just going to put that pencil mark in. I mean, it's far from proven, but that would become a 2. We've got 165 up here, 98 here, that would be a 2. This would have to be 473, of which the 7 would have to be here because of the 4 and 3 in the bottom row. And the 7 can't be here because you've got a 7 here, 7 here. There'd have to be a 7 here, and we've already established this is 689 that got pushed around the corner from there. So... That's not possible. I mean, do go back through that if you want to see how that kind of logic works. But it, it all starts with this interesting sort of balancing of you need only one of seven and six, but exactly one of seven and six in the top row up here. Because seven and six can't be here, and this is either six or seven. So one of those only must be six or seven. And we've just established that based on this being the seven, that pushes 6, 5 down. That forces us around the outside of the grid up here. It gives us this 2, and that's impossible because we can't place a 7 down here without killing this box. I mean, that's, that's a pretty complicated chain, but it works. So that now establishes which of these 7s is right. So we'll get rid of that 2 that we, we put in just for examples. I mean, good luck doing that with no pencil marks at all. I, for me, that's absolutely minimum pencil marks to be able to see that chain. So we now know that this, the 7 must be down here and the 6 must be up here. Now we can't necessarily fix the 5 next to the 6 at this point, but we can start filling in the uh, remaining numbers that that gives us. There's this 1 down here that now resolves the 9 and the 1 at the top, which wouldn't have been the same the other way around. 8 there, 9 there. Um, we've got 5, 3 here, so that gives us 2, 6 pair down there. This is now a 7, 8, 9 combination. Uh, 6 and 4. That resolves 4 and 2. What have we got? 8. The only place in row 3 for an 8 now is there. Um, 6, 5. That's a 2 at the top. That resolves this 4, 2 pair. We've got an 8 there. 
this is nine eight seven so there's nine seven eight going on down there uh, we don't know quite what's what out of one two three there yet but the only place for a nine in column two is here that gives us three and two and that place is seven got two and one in the bottom row there's a three one and four here and now we're just finishing off obviously three up here that gives us three and five and finally we now know that five always had to be in the third row there and we get finished so that's that's one way of getting through this puzzle i mean it is tricky i I do think, Gabby, if you're prepared to use pencil marks, you won't you won't take 40 minutes over that kind of puzzle. But a bit of a chain there to follow, but very nice kind of beginning with that counterbalancing of six or seven having to be at the top in this box. And that gave a kind of very forced chain around here, which helped us get going. So interesting puzzle, nice solve, and uh, thanks for sending it in. Do um like the video if you if you did enjoy it subscribe please uh delighted to have got over twenty three thousand subscribers now and still going uh you're very welcome to the channel uh feel free to look for us on patreon at cracking the cryptic and sponsor us there um and certainly patreons have more chance than most of having their puzzles made into videos that's under undoubtedly true Thanks for watching and hope to see you again on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye.